जय हिंद लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इट गिव मे ग्रेट प्लेजर टू एक्सटेंड ए वेरी वार्म वेलकम टू ईच वन ऑफ यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग मी ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ द रिलीज ऑफ दिस एजुकेटिव वीडियो ऑन हेजर्स एसोसिएटेड विद अनस्टेबलाइज अप्रोचेज अनस्टेबलाइज अप्रोचेज हैव बीन रिस्पॉन्सिबल for causing large number of accidents both the accidents at mangalore and kodikode were mainly caused due to unstabilized approach and failure to go around hence it is essential that the pilots were aware about the hazards posed by unstabilized approaches now we'll have a look at what is a stabilized approach a stabilized approach is an approach in which the aircraft must have the correct landing configuration attitude air speed power and thrust setting and be at the right position of the runway to provide the pilot with the best opportunity for a safe landing establishing and maintaining a stabilized approach is a major contributory factor in the safe conclusion of any flight now we'll discuss the criteria for a stabilized approach now pilots must remember that all the flights are stabilized by 1000 feet above airport elevation in imc conditions and by 500 feet above airport elevation in vmc conditions the aircraft should be on the correct flight path only small changes in heading oblique pitch should be required to maintain the correct flight path the aircraft speed is not more than v ref plus 20 knots indicated air speed and not less than v ref as a consequence of particular speed instructions by atc a deviation from the stabilized speed and thrust setting is permitted from 1000 feet to 500 feet above runway level in this case the stabilized speed criteria and the associated thrust setting must be reached positively by 500 feet above runway level the aircraft should be in the correct landing configuration sink rate should not be more than 1000 feet per minute and if an approach requires a sink rate greater than 1000 feet per minute a special briefing should be conducted power setting should be appropriate for the aircraft configuration and in not blow the minimum power for approach as defined by the aircraft operating manual all briefing and checklists should have been completed specific type of approaches are stabilized if they also fulfill the following instrument landing system approaches must be flown within one dot of the glide slope and localizer a category 2 or category 3 ils approach must be flown within the expanded localizer band during a circling approach wings should be level on final when the aircraft reaches 300 feet above airport elevation 
360 degree turns during the final approach phase are prohibited when the aircraft is below the minimum safe altitude. Unique approach procedures or abnormal conditions requiring a deviation from the element discussed require a special briefing. An approach that becomes unstabilized below 1000 feet above airport elevation in IMC or below 500 feet above airport elevation in VMC requires an immediate go around. Any time an approach is not stabilized at the minimum stabilization height or becomes unstabilized below the minimum stabilization height, a go around should be conducted. Now we will discuss why pilots do not go around when situation demands they go around. Failure to execute a go round is a leading risk factor in approach and landing accidents. There is a general reluctance on the part of the pilots to go around. Pilots do not go around due to firstly or confidence. Some pilots think that they will be able to hack it and land safely since they feel that they will be able to control the aircraft to get into stable flight conditions before touchdown. Next expectation of success. If a pilot has landed on earlier occasions with an unstabilized approach under similar conditions, so he feels confident that this time also he or she will be able to land safely. Next is ego. Most of the human beings are egoist and pilots are no different. The pilots are concerned about what the co-pilot, ATC, other pilots on the same frequency, company management will think about the performance and competence of the pilot if they go around. Then there are unfounded fear of being questioned by the ATC, DGCA and management of the company. On time performance, flight scheduling, commercial, VIP passenger or self-imposed pressure also prevent pilots from going around. Sometimes the weather may be so bad that with great difficulty the pilot has been able to find the runway and align with it. And now the pilot is apprehensive that if he goes around he will have to face adverse weather again and may not find the runway due to bad weather. There may be occasions when the pilots have exhausted the fuel in circling and going around and do not have enough fuel to go around like it happened in the case of the aircraft at Trivandrum. When the aircraft had just 346 kgs of fuel on the seventh final approach after having carried out six failed approaches. Now we shall have a look at the factors which lead to unstabilized approach. First one is human error and procedural non compliance. Both of these have been identified as primary contributing factor to
to unstabilize a process. Procedural non-compliance may be inadvertent due to an error or a lack of knowledge or alternatively the result of an intentional violation but in either case represents an undesirable deviation that increases the risk. Next is the fatigue factor. A fatigued pilot is likely to get into unstabilized approach conditions due to the degraded performance of his mental faculties. Crew induced or ATC induced circumstances resulting in insufficient time to plan, prepare and conduct a safe approach like accepting requests from ATC to fly higher or faster or to fly shorter routings than desired. Excessive altitude or excessive airspeed early in the approach. Loss of situational awareness due to lack of planning, preparation, briefing, knowledge or confidence and complacency on the part of the pilots. Poor visibility and visual illusions. Inadequate recognition of the effect of wind conditions by the pilots. Adverse weather that is strong or gusty winds, wind shear, turbulence and tailwinds. Inadequate monitoring by the flight crew. Excessive altitude and or air speed. That is inadequate energy management early in the arrival or approach. Excessive altitude and oblique or air speed too close to the threshold. Speed restriction inappropriate to the type of aircraft and oblique or to the weather conditions prevailing at the airport that is low ceiling, poor visibility, tailwind at altitude, etc. Terrain and obstacles near the airport. ATC misunderstanding of operational characteristics of various types of aircrafts. Late runway change may be due to lack of ATC awareness of the time required by the flight crew to reconfigure the aircraft for a new approach. Excessive head down work that is requirement of reprogramming the flight management system. Late takeover from automation that is because the autopilot failed to capture the glide slope. Premature descent or late descent caused by failure to positively identify the final approach fix. Incorrect anticipation of aircraft distillation characteristics in level flight or on a three degree glide path by the pilots. Failure to recognize deviation or failure to adhere to the excessive parameter deviation limits. Sometimes it may happen that the entire approach has been flown at idle thrust down to touch down because of excessive air speed and oblique or excessive altitude from early in the approach. Steep approach that is about desired flight path with excessive vertical speed. 
Now let's have a look at the consequences of an unstabilized approach. The continuation of an unstabilized approach to landing may result in the aircraft touching down too fast, too hard, outside the touchdown zone, long or short, off the runway center line, in the incorrect attitude or incorrectly configured for landing. These may in turn lead to a bounced landing, aircraft damage, runway excursion or landing short. Now we shall discuss how we can prevent unstabilized approaches. First of all, the operators must ensure that SOPs on stabilized approaches are clear, concise, appropriate, and include the requirement to meet and maintain the stabilized approach criteria. Go around if the criteria are not met and guidance for the go around decision making progress process. Ensure strict compliance with SOPs by the pilots. The flight crew must stay ahead of the aircraft throughout the flight. This includes achieving desired flight parameters, that is aircraft configuration, aircraft position, energy condition, track, vertical speed, altitude, airspeed, and attitude during the descent, approach, and landing. Any indication that a desired flight parameter will not be achieved should prompt immediate corrective action or the decision to go around. Prevention of unstabilized approaches can be achieved by early detection and correction of the factors that contribute to an unstabilized approach. The pilots and controllers should avoid situation that is, which results in rushing approaches. In order to achieve and maintain stabilized approach, pilots must be constantly aware of each of the required parameters throughout the approach. A call out is required if either pilot observes a deviation from the specified limits of the stabilization criteria or a deviation from the standard operating procedures. Pilots should use standard callouts to improve cross-check, coordination, and mutual crew member awareness to give commands, delegate a task, acknowledge a command or confirm receipt of the information, challenge and respond to checklist items, call a change of an indication, identify a specific event, and identify any accidents. It is essential to remember that as workload increases, an individual capacity is reduced and the hearing gets affected due to which the effectiveness of the call-out during situations of high workload in the cockpit is degraded. The repeated call-outs ensure continuing awareness 
until the undesirable condition has been corrected, much like the oral warning logic of a ground proximity warning system or traffic collision avoidance system, which continues until the hazardous condition is no longer present. The callouts stabilize unstable or go round at a given point on the approach like stabilization altitude oblique height may improve decision making and compliance to ensure that a timely go round is carried out while a stabilized call out might be required at either 1000 feet or 500 feet about us down, the go around command can and must be made at any time prior to the deployment of thrust reversals. Effective briefings can influence teamwork, coordination, understanding, professional behavior, and communication. Briefings must be carried out to ensure common understanding of the plan, effective communication between all flight crew members and between flight crew and ATC, flight crew coordination, cross-checking and backup must be ensured. It is the duty of the ATC to advise the pilots of any known particularities to a given approach oblique descent profile, that is weather conditions, wind shear, delays, pilot reports from previous aircraft, turbulence, and orographic activity, etc. The following elements of flight crew behavior can contribute to stabilize approaches, facilitate go-around decision-making, and improve overall situational awareness. First one is call-out acknowledgements must be made. Then passing the altitude calls are important. Excessive flight parameter deviation call-outs are must. Monitoring and cross-checking by the pilot monitoring. Task sharing and standard calls for acquisition of visual references. Depending on the type of approach and aircraft equipment, the most appropriate level of automation as well as available visual references should be used to establish and to monitor the stabilization of the aircraft. Now we'll discuss some of the recommendations. Now, flight crew should start their descent preparation and approach briefings as soon as all the pertinent data have been received preferably 10 minutes prior to top of descent. Strict adherence to SOPs for flight management systems setup will assist in descent planning and execution, including confirmation of flight management system navigation accuracy, cross-check of all the data entries, review of terrain and other approach hazards. In order to avoid an unstabilized approach, it is important for the flight crew to be aware of the stabilization approach criteria. The aircraft horizontal and vertical position in respect to a stabilized approach at all times, even when under radar, control. Pilots should comply with the stabilized approach criteria 
published in their SOPs. The flight crew must recognize that the approach is unstable. Communicate with fellow crew members about the unstable approach. Take immediate action to rectify the situation and thereafter monitor the corrective action. Pilots should not hesitate to advise ATC when unable to comply with a clearance that would result in the aircraft being too high and oblique or too fast would require approach path interception from above or would reduce separation from other aircraft. Instructions that are incompatible with a stabilized approach. ATC should be advised by the pilots when reducing or increasing speed to achieve a stabilized approach. Pilots should decline late changes of landing runway when approach stabilization would become marginal or impossible. Pilot should execute a go around if the approach cannot be stabilized by the stabilization altitude, oblique height, or subsequently becomes unstabilized. They should be alert to the approach becoming unstabilized on very short final or in the flare. Pilot should also be aware that it may be possible to go around even after touchdown as long as reverse thrust has not been selected. Once the decision is made to go around, the pilots must maintain positive control of the flight trajectory and accurately follow the published missed approach in accordance with manufacturer's recommendations and operator's SOPs. Pilots must remember that following the initiation of a go-around, no attempt should be made to reverse the decision and to land. Even when the pilots have decided to land at decision altitude, the option remains for them to go around at any point up until reversers are deployed. Below decision altitude, if a go around is indicated, the decision must not be delayed. Go around can be initiated until the selection of the reverse thrust. And once a go around has been initiated, it must be completed. Almost all the pilots are familiar with the land oblique go around decision at decision altitude. However, the pilots may be less familiar with the same decision in the final part of the approach below decision altitude. Operators go around training should include a range of operational scenarios, including go around from positions other than decision altitude oblique minimum descent altitude and the designated stabilized approach altitude. This will address both go-around decision making and its execution. Air traffic controllers have an important role to play in preventing approach and landing accidents particularly related to go-around. The Airport Authority of India may consider enhancing the awareness of the controllers and the management personnel about the risks 
associated with unstabilized approaches. The air traffic controllers should keep altitude and route clearance to a minimum during a go round since it adds workload to an already busy pilot. If absolutely necessary, the altitude and oblique or route clearance during a go round should suit the missed approach procedure in order to minimize the workload in the cockpit. The operators should enhance the awareness of the pilots and management personnel about the contributing factors and risks associated with unstabilized approaches. They must adopt and promote a policy of compliance with stabilized approach criteria and mandatory go around. The operators must implement a non punity policy for go around and they should follow fuel policies which allow pilots to carry additional fuel when they consider it necessary without undue interference from the management. Operators also should accept the delay and cost associated with go around. The operators should promote effective and interactive briefings of the pilots to enhance crew resource management, flight crew coordination, preparedness for planned actions, and unexpected occurrences by creating a common mental model of the approach. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for sparing your precious time to watch this video presentation. Just for your information, a study was carried out which established that 87% pilot did not go round when the situation demanded a go round due to unstabilized approach. DGCA has clearly stated in the car on all weather operations that no questions will be asked by DGCA, ATC and operator if the pilots go around in the interest of safety. Hope the pilots will learn lessons and will not hesitate to go around in case of unstabilized approach. Wishing you all very happy and safe flying and many many happy landings. Jai Hind.